Ow! <laughs> Hello everyone, my name's Bottletop Hornet, and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft. Now, a couple of you Eagle Eye viewers might already know, either that or you may have been part of the Twitch streams, but I have a new skin, or an updated skin. I have done a bit of work to change up the skin that I had, uh, make it a little bit more updated, give it some more hair, we even added a B on the back for bottle, uh, there's a T on the pants legs, and there's a H at the belt there for BTH, Bottle Top Hornet. I figured it was time to uh, update it a little bit. There's a little bit of darkness on the uh, face for some stubble, stuff like that. Just a bit of fun. Uh, we did it on a live stream and updated that. But I've just made it back here to the, the nether hub with a whole lot of Wither Skeleton Skulls. So I've been gathering those in between episodes and, uh, and getting ready to start setting up the beacons in the towers for this episode now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab myself enough uh, of the soul sand to go over and fight a whole bunch of Withers, probably 40 to be specific. And yeah, I think we should have enough. Uh, oh, it's in there, it's in there. So if we have 40 of those, uh, oh god, I need to uh, clear out some of my inventory first. Make some room so that I can do some, do some adjusting. Right, so if we have that, we also need 40 in all of those, so that's not too hard. One, two, three, let's do that. Uh, something like, um, that. <laughs> so now with that, we have the amount of soul sand that we need to uh, take them all on. And with the setup that I got underneath the, the end portal in the end dimension, it's going to be easy for me to kill them all. I just have to go ahead and do it. So I'm going to quickly go ahead and kill 40 withers. Oh, and then we're going to pop in and get to work starting to set them up in this in this archipelago here and also get the uh, the towers started there's monsters nearby come on well uh, yeah let's do some wither killing <laughs> And so, with <laughs> those 40 withers uh, taken care of and out of the way, plus a couple of others that I've had over time, I have 42, 42 wither stars, which, as you can see here, is enough to make uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, <laughs> 10 of these towers worth of, uh, of beacon setups, so we're good to go. I only need nine. It's getting dark. Ha ha ha. So let's jump down here into base, quickly go to sleep, and then what we need to do is work out whether we have enough blocks to make the bases for all of these. So I do have a bunch of iron built up, even though the iron farm is not that great. It still does the trick. We'll grab some of that, but we also have well over a shulker, nearly two shulkers worth of uh, emerald blocks. So that's definitely going to be enough, I would think. <laughs> to uh, to get all of that sorted. So, uh, let's grab a handful of these and we'll go out to a nice flat spot, probably over here actually. We'll go over here and see how many it takes because this isn't like a normal beacon where we want just the one in the middle. We actually want a four setup. So the, the base of the beacon is going to be a little bit bigger. So with that, what I'm going to do is go one, two, three, four instead of the one for the center and then we can come out four in all directions one two three four one two three four and oh, one two three four fill that base in and we'll be able to see how many blocks it uses now just before i do anything else we started off with four stacks exactly good to know so i'm going to fill this base in and with a bit of luck it won't be too significantly larger than a uh, a standard one it'll be a bit but uh hopefully not too much Okay, I think, I think that's it. So three stacks plus 24, which is quick maths. Uh, 180 plus 192 plus 24 is 96, 100, 
uh, 216 blocks. <laughs> 216 blocks per tower times nine. 216 times nine. Quick maths. Uh, 216 times nine is 1,800. No, I can't do it. I have to get a calculator. Hold on. <laughs> Uh, it's uh, 1,944 blocks. So, let's see if we've got that much. Um, I, better, <laughs> I better pick this up. <laughs> Alright. And honestly, I think we're going to use the emerald blocks for this. Because iron, not only is it valuable, but also it can be a decent looking pig. No, not a pig. It can be a decent looking building block. And uh, the emeralds are so easy to come by. I literally have... A full shulker plus some. So what I'm going to do is, well, grab this shulker and work out exactly how many stacks I need. We'll uh, we'll fill these these ones up, and then we can get to digging down to the bedrock level on every single one of those towers and try and set up my grid of uh, of beacons. So yeah, let me work out how many of these I need, how many stacks of emerald blocks. And uh, then we can get to work. Oh, I'm so excited to see these beacons set up, guys. I am... Oh, it's been a long time coming. So let's get this organized and see what it looks like. Ooh, I almost forgot that I also need to make up a bunch of the beacons. So what? I can't actually remember the recipe. It's glass and maybe obsidian for the base. Let's quickly have a look through all of this and see whether we can see it. Yeah, obsidian. So we need... A bunch of obsidian and a bunch of glass. Let's go trade for some glass. The beauty of being at such an end game level is getting myself, uh, well, just over 30 blocks of uh, emerald <laughs> is not too difficult. And I can also go and grab a couple of spare ones and just trade up for all of these items quite easily. So just like this, grab some of those emeralds that we have in storage. And I can come across to my librarians and just grab stacks and stacks of glass super quickly, super cheap. And I don't have to go and gather sand, hello pig, <laughs> or uh, smelt it up or anything, which is amazing. So if we do that, we might almost get enough from one pass through to, uh, to make all of the beacons. Let's see. Need a crafting table. Um, yeah, I can make them all. There we go. <laughs> just like that. 42 beacons one of the most expensive blocks in the game and we've just got 42 of them nice and easy what the heck <laughs> oh man this is so satisfying ah, <laughs> now we should be ready to go get set up with all of that stuff okay <laughs> so i have my blocks that are necessary for setting up all the beacon bases i have my beacons themselves now we're up to the point where i want to go and dig all of the holes down. So let me put away this little bit of glass and this little bit of obsidian. The problem that we're going to come across now is that a lot of these go straight through. Actually, I'll just go directly under. They go straight into the ocean. So, ooh, yeah, I got up there. So what I'm going to have to do is uh, dig down and block off the water and then go all the way down to bedrock. And I'm going to have to do that on a lot of these. So it's going to take me a little while to do. Once I get all of that set up, I can set up the bases for all the beacons and I want to, I think I want to do black. I think I want to do black glass on top of them so that the beams coming out are nice and dark. They look sort of obsidian-y, obsidian-y, <laughs> if that makes sense. Because, oh my god, this is probably going to be the best view of the, uh, of the aisle. Look at that. Oh, and once these things have beacons just... Beaming straight up through the sky. Oh, I'm excited. It's raining. Okay. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is uh, sleep through the night and get rid of this rain. I'm also going to go and try and dig all of those towers out. And I will set up the, uh, the bases, but I won't put the beacons on there yet. I want you guys to be part of that. So I'll go do the off-camera work that I need to. Set up the bases of all of the beacons. I can fly through there. Ow. I can't fly through there. <laughs> and uh, once I've got that sorted, we'll come back through, grab ourselves a bunch of black glass, and we'll go around to every single tower and start adding the beacons. I'm, ugh, I'm so excited. This is the moment that I have been building towards for months, months and months and months and months. This is the plan that I had in my head 
so long ago. And the idea that it's all happening right now in this episode is so exciting to me. So let me do that work, get that sorted, and oh man, it's finally time. It's finally time to set up the beacons. Okay, see you in a second. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm done with placing down all of the stuff in preparation for beacons, but look what's in my hand. I wasn't recording, but oh, naturally acquired enchanted chainmail pants. Ah, the thing I've been trying to get for so long now. So, so long. So if we pop over here, I can finally... Oh my god, I can finally do this. Oh, yeah. Ah, that's so cool. All we have to do now is manage to kill something and get unenchanted boots, or find them in a chest, mind you, and we've got the whole set. Oh, so many wonderful things happening in this episode. <laughs> so, as you can see here, I have prepared my beacons. I've got uh, some iron to set them up and some black glass to organize uh, for making the beams black. That's what I was trying to say. But there's one thing that we need to sort out before I do all of that. And that is this middle beacon. See, the thing is, or this middle tower, I should say, <laughs> because if we come over here, that's in the way. <laughs> and with what kind of things I want to do underneath here, it may be that we have to remove these farms. Now, I'm going to leave that one there for now because it's not quite in the way. But this one here is, uh, is cutting into the corner of the mob farm. So I think I'm going to actually remove it. I've got... Uh, oh, I looked at that end of it. I've got plenty of of built-up storage over there, like built-up uh, items, and I don't think that I'm going to need more for a good while. Uh, I've got enough gunpowder here to make me a ton of of rockets and such, so that's good. I don't need any more string, I don't need any more bones, and I don't need any more rotten flesh. I think they're actually even overflowing into here. Yeah, look at that. Uh, so, yeah. Ah. We definitely don't need that stuff. So what I'm thinking is, for now, I, uh, I shut off the, the mob farm, remove it completely, and if we need more down the line, we can easily make one somewhere else. I also have many, many shulkers worth of TNT, plus the stuff that I have in here. So if we ever decide we wanted to go looking for some more netherite or something, easy done. We got heaps of TNT. So I think what I'm going to do is actually place down just a single beacon, just one, in this external corner and put on some haste so that I can uh, tear this down pretty quickly. So if we jump down here, just, oh, <gasps> by the way, this guy, I've known about him for a very, very long time. He has been trapped in this dirt since probably within the first 10 episodes of this series. He's holding something, but I don't know how he got trapped in there he's there though he's there permanently so i i'm kind of uh thinking i'll leave him there forever <laughs> maybe we can come up with a name for him but uh we're gonna leave him there and uh, head down to the bottom of this and put down beacon number one yeah let's put a piece of black glass on top of it like so Turn that black, ooh. And now a single piece of this in here will activate the haste too, so that we can dismantle that, that mob farm quite easily. And then from there, we'll go around, ow. <laughs> we'll go around and place them all in. So I think quick 10 second time lapse, take down this mob farm, remove all of the stuff and clean this area up a little bit. And then we'll get to the main part of the episode, the fun part. See you in a second. All right, with this opened up and uh, no longer having any spawnable spaces in there, heap of bats, but uh, <laughs> no mobs anymore. We do have this fully opened up now and ready to put the beacons up straight through to the sky. So I'm going to drop down here uh, carefully and, God, it's a long way down. Hello? There we go. <laughs> and with a bit of luck, we don't have to deal with these bats too much. You go. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> oh, I put them away. <laughs> One second. All right, <laughs> so we're going to put down these beacons if we can get them. 
Yep, there's that one. Please leave. I don't want to hit you guys. Get out. Come on. Uh, yes. So we put those down. <laughs> and what we're going to do is try and work out... Oh. Wait, why did... Hmm? Construct and place a beacon. Bring a beacon to full power. Why didn't I get that for the first one? Hmm. Anyway, so we have the haste too. What we're going to do is set up a couple of different things. I want jump boost too. I want speed too. And then for this last one, I'm thinking regeneration and resistance. I don't really care about the strength, but it would be nice to regenerate health and resist some damage if we get caught by something. So if we do that, we won't make it resistance too. We'll just have the two together and we should get both of those up and running. No? Hmm. Oh, right. Of course. <laughs> I mucked it up. Because yes, that is considered resistance. And if you want to stack it, you add the second one. So we add the regeneration. And there we go. So if we open up this, now we have regeneration, resistance, speed 2, jump boost 2, and haste 2. Look at that jump height. <laughs> so now what we can do is, if there's even more bats. Excuse me. We put the black one there. Uh... Come on, get the black one there. And if you guys will get out, look out, look out. Yes. Now we have all black beams going up. Oh, amazing, amazing. Oh, and there we go. Ouch, ouch. Wonderful. So, here it is. Oh. Oh, oh my God. Oh, I love it so much. Oh my god. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> it's a little pixelated because of the uh, the way that it's rendering distant stuff, but imag you don't have to imagine. We'll get all of these up and running and see what it looks like. Oh, it's so exciting. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I have done it, but there's a couple of things we need to talk about. So, for starters, you can see some of them, but uh, I've realized now that they only render within a 256 block radius. So, unless I'm sitting right in the center, there they go, unless I'm sitting in the center of the island, you can't actually see them all activated at the same time. So here, which will work because we're going to have a viewing platform on this tower, uh, here you can see them all. So that's amazing. I, I love this. It looks so cool. We've got all of those activated. But uh, I kind of didn't realize how large a circle I had made. <laughs> because there's 200 blocks between that tower and this tower. And uh, these only go 50 blocks out in each direction from the beacon itself. So there's a hundred block radius in the middle of here that just doesn't have coverage by any of these. And that's not really what I was going for here. I wanted to have most of this area experiencing the same uh, beacon effects so that I could run around anywhere in my base and, and have all of that going at the same time. So it's actually been many, many, many hours since I put these beacons in because I've been over in a creative world working on a little something to try and come up with an idea for placement for more beacons. So if we swap over to there, we will see as this loads in a recreation of the 400 <laughs> block circle. Wait, there we go. And uh, there we go. Uh, this is the 400 block circle that I have set up in my base. And the point that I'm over right now is essentially the center of the islands. Now, these islands and the ones on the outside have those beacons and those squares on the outside represent a 100 by 100 block area. It looks so tiny from up here, I know, but to give you a bit of perspective, that is a village and that is one of my areas. So right now, I've actually set this up so that we have six extra lots of beacons. These ones will be in line and then I worked out that if I added two on these sides, we would actually get a decent amount of coverage without uh, 
having too much overlap and wasted overlap area. So let me jump over into Photoshop and I'll show you guys how I have it set up and how I designed it around my existing setup to, uh, to make it all work. So let's go over into Photoshop now where I actually have this setup here, which is an overhead view. If I zoom in just slightly, an overhead view of my islands. Now I've got the beacons in and everything. And what I did is I took a screenshot at the exact same Y level height of 440 and I overlaid it like so. So now you can see that's the squares that I had set up on that uh, creative world, but I just removed the green part of the uh, grass and made it transparent so that I could see that over the top of all of this. So with that, you can kind of see that those existing squares really didn't cover a lot of this internal part of the island and that central tower only got a really really small bit so if i add one in the middle of this island here i can just transfer the uh, the road around that a little bit and have one coming straight through the center it's actually going to look pretty centralized on that island setup which is cool and then these four here will be in the ocean uh, that one's going to be right close by to my uh super smelter but we might be able to actually implement it into the design of the the building that we make around it and then that one that one and that one will all be in the ocean just fine we can make some smaller towers uh or more bases they won't be towers like these ones they might just be something up to the surface of the ocean and then that's it the beams go up from there and then this last one here if we kind of look about where the center is and i zoom right in for those of you who've been watching the series for a while, you will definitely recognize this area as the one that I come in to uh, where my sorting system for the mob farm and everything was just in here. And I'm thinking that with a bit of luck, the place that this will line up with is actually right inside just near that little staircase that comes down into the open area and my bedrooms over here. So let me jump back over into Minecraft and I'll give you guys a look at where that one might be and then we'll see whether we can get them all set up. So just down there, and what we might do is actually have a look at this. We are at 210. So 210 across there is the line that it's going to be, and we should be able to at least get on that line and see where it lines up uh, with what we have. It might even be just outside here, honestly. So if we do this, uh, 212, 210. Look at that. It might, <laughs> honestly, it might end up being right in this empty wow totally planned absolutely pre-planned i knew all along i, I just knew you know <laughs> so this little corner that has been just kind of ugly and unfinished this whole time might actually serve a purpose all we have to do is uh, pop straight up through there and it shouldn't hit anything important it's just uh, maybe a removal of a couple of trees and that will bridge the gap in between these two sides because if this is the center, it'll go 50 blocks that way and 50 blocks that way, creating the 100 block spacing that we needed in between them. Nice. So if I just quickly pop over onto this island as well, same sort of thing. If we come over here, it's going to be on the 210, which I managed to land on perfectly. It's going to be around here, around in the center of the island. And once again, it'll be more like a uh, just a feature, a slight bump out of the ground and more beacons coming out that way. So, yeah. No, that's good. That's good. <laughs> I, think, I think it'll work out okay. And it'll give us a really, really good coverage with our beacon effects. It's going to look pretty... Uh, pretty noisy in the sky, I think. But it's going to be worth it for the, uh, the mega base. And this one over here is just going to be right on the edge of here as well. Ow. <laughs> Just down there. So with that being said, that's another, uh, what, six times four, 24 beacons, which is 72 skulls. Uh, yeah, thank goodness I have a, a wither skeleton farm. And thank goodness I've already done the grinding. <laughs> so I worked out that with the six left over I had out of those 42, I only needed 54 more skulls. So it's time to go uh, kill a couple more withers and get those beacons ready, and then we'll uh, we'll see if we can get them set up. Ten second time lapse time. So 
with another uh, 18 withers taken care of, that should get us up to the 24 required for 6 extra. Wait, 6 times 4? Yeah, 24. Excuse you. <laughs> and uh, that way we should be able to set that up. It's actually thundering outside right now, and that's very rare for me. So I'm just going to leave it to do that, because why not? That's quite cool. Um, I need to see whether or not I have enough obsidian. I don't. So we need to go over to our little piglin trading hall and just grab a little bit extra of that to uh, make up the rest of them. And uh, yeah, then we can get going on putting in the rest of the beacons. And that junt pipe that you get from the, uh, the beacons is actually crazy. Oh my god. Alright. Uh... That should be enough. <laughs> plenty, plenty. And we may as well just use crafting table that we have just here. There we go. 18 more beacons. Total of 24. You love to see it. <laughs> Alright. So, now what I need to do is uh, work out how many, how many more blocks I need. So, we put that away and the, uh, the glass as well. I'll try and remember what we worked out. Now, I'll put this away because I got the smite, <laughs> the smite sword just to kill the, uh, the wither quicker. We worked out that per beacon, it was three stacks and 20, maybe? A little bit over, uh, I think it was 216. So we might still have enough of these uh, emerald blocks. If not, we'll make them out of the iron. So it'd be like... Uh, <laughs> Um, maybe we need to make it out of iron, honestly. All right, let's work out how much iron we need for it. Oh, good. That's also been running in the background, which is nice. So we do have a little bit extra. So if I think about it, I'm pretty sure instead of a 9 by 9 base, it was a 10 by 10 because it's got the extra in the middle. So 10 by 10 is 100. Then the next layer is 8 by 8, 64, 164. The next layer is 6 by 6, which is 36, which goes straight to 200. And then 4x4, four four, 216. Wonderful. So 216, and this is, three of those is 180, 192, plus 8, 24. So 224 per thingy. <laughs> so if that's 1, and then this is 2, and then 3, 4, 5, and uh, <laughs> 6. So it uses up a lot of our iron, but that will get us completely set up with this grid and that's sort of the whole point of uh making these things i don't have enough room uh, <laughs> okay <laughs> actually watch this all for the oh goodness <laughs> that was almost dangerous all for the space wonderful so now i have all the iron that i need all the beacons that i need i'm going to do the thing make it uh, all set up properly i'm going to work out where those line up in the world and to do so, I think I should maybe make a bit of a grid off that central tower. That's probably my easiest way to do it. Make sure it's as lined up as I can. And uh, especially for these outside ones, I want to make sure that those are directly in between and in the right spot. So we should put all of this stuff that we need for the beacons inside of a shulker box just so that we have the room in our inventory. So like this... Put all of that away. It's still a decent chunk of uh, blocks there. So, yep, good. We'll put that in there as well. Even though I don't know whether I'm going to do these center ones as black yet. But with those there, if we grab some netherrack, which is really, really easy to break. Uh, if we grab a decent amount of this, we can use that as our scaffolding to set up the positioning for it all. I'm also going to grab a stack of this for going through the ocean floor. And let's see what we can do. So, if I come up here... Hmm, one... Oh, two... Three... Four... Oh, God. It's hard to count when you jump that high. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes. Nine, ten, eleven. I think eleven is what I planned. For something that I'll show you at the end of the episode. So, eleven blocks up here is the top of what I want these base structures to be. From there, if we actually open this up just a bit so that we have some uh, access all around, from there we want to come out 50 blocks 
from that central point. Now, I think it's 50 blocks off of the uh, beacon itself, not starting here and then going 50, but I'm going to start here and go 50 anyway from the perimeter of this, just because if it's one block off, it's going to be it's going to be close enough that it doesn't really matter because we're not going to often stop and stand right in the middle of the, the two points. We're going to be moving around enough that it won't matter. So I'm going to count one, two. Actually, what I can do to make it a lot easier is put 48 in my hand and just go out until that finishes up. So that there is the external point. So if I open up my inventory, we should see some of those are refreshing, but we're far enough away from two outside ones that we don't. So that is the external perimeter. If I went here, those should refresh. Yes. So that 49 away from that edge is within range. 50 is perfect. From there, it should be another 50 blocks to just over the top of that one. So if I once again make this and go the 50 blocks out like so... It might actually be in a terrible position. Not quite where we wanted it to be. Hmm. So if that is there, I think that would technically be where I wanted to put it. Either that or uh, in this position here, which is dead center of uh, everything that I've got. Hmm. Let's actually have a look, see. So if that is there... It's, it's right in the middle. <laughs> it's right in the middle of my walkway. Not quite what I wanted. So it's weather for this one. We actually do put it right here. Uh, a couple of blocks off, it is going to overlap with that one in there a little bit and not quite reach the, uh, the destination of this one over there. But like I said before, a couple of blocks difference means that I can, I can just move in between those two zones and uh, it's not going to affect us too much. So to make it work better for our, uh, our situation, we're going to just smidge it over, smidge it over, move it over a smidge and, uh, and make it work better for my base. And we'll deal with the fact that it's a couple of blocks off. So if I come over here and say we line up with that, put it right there. And then if I come up here, dig my way through. Now we have our spot, which is gonna line up perfectly with uh with the underside of there so how far out is it one two three four ish five six something like that not too bad so from there that will be our point where it sits good now all i'm going to do is the same sort of thing come out off the center on both sides and then go and also at the back as well and then i'm just going to go across to this point, in fact, um, hmm, we may as well. No, 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 it's different. It's different. <laughs> I, for a second, I thought that it would line up with there, but it's far more over that direction. So, yes, I'm going to use these blocks, set up my grid, and get it all started, but I won't waste your time with that. I think just doing this one bridge shows you uh, the way that I'm going to work out the direct positioning above the water and whatnot. Once that's all in, I will, uh, I'll come back to you guys once I have all of the beacons set up. All right, see you in a second. And so, <laughs> after a little bit of effort, we have some beacons, a couple more. Oh, it's nearly night time. So now we have these extra six. We have actually fairly decent coverage. So as you can see, those ones are coming out of the ocean. This one over here is pretty much right in the middle of that path as we expected it to be. And then these two here coming out of the ocean again, just there. So almost in line with the end of this island as well. Now, look at that. <laughs> look at all those beacons. So I'm debating whether or not to uh, try some different colors, but we might go to sleep. I was thinking maybe instead of black, just to signify that they're a little bit close to the center. I wouldn't mind doing them with a gray or like a light gray glass. So if I just sleep quickly and uh, we'll see whether we've got any, <laughs> any available. Hold on. Um, light gray gra grass, glass, grass, block, glass, gray. <laughs> uh, okay. 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 Uh, we will take the white with us as well. And what I might do is actually just see whether we have 
plain gray? We do. Let's make some gray glass as well because we might try them all. We might see, I think white actually just looks like the plain beacons anyway. It doesn't really change the color, but I can test that right here. In fact, we may as well test it on this one. So white doesn't change, not at all. Good to know. So the white, go away. <laughs> now, light gray. Darkens it a little bit. Okay, okay. What about the plain gray? Darkens it significantly more. Oh, it's uh, it's my water boy. <laughs> I put him in there a long time ago. Okay, so I might try the gray. I might just do the plain gray rather than the light gray. And we'll see how that looks when we do it all. I actually need a little bit more. <laughs> okay, that should be enough. So I'm just going to go around and uh, go down to the bottom of the ocean. And I'll probably just put it on top of what I have there already. So if we come down here, there we go. I love how fast uh, we move now with all of these beacons active all the way around the, the archipelago. Now, obviously, that one's going to change a bit. We're going to put something over top of this so you won't see the glass sitting there. And just these two to go like that. And eh, like that. No. <laughs> Wait. Uh, like that. So let's jump up here now. And subtly different. But I kind of like it. Like you can tell from a distance, it kind of looks almost as dark, but it is just slightly different. God, look at the skyline of this right now. Unbelievable. Let me just get up a bit higher. That is a total of uh, eight times four is 32, plus these ones in the middle is 36, plus another six, which is 24. 60 beacons? Wait, 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 wait. One, two, three, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 times 4, 60. We have a 60 beacon set up here. Look at it all just sitting behind me. All of these beams. Amazing. Amazing. And that gives us really, really good coverage of all of these effects over the whole area. While trying my best to not make it too ugly. Uh, but yeah, adding some little areas over here, like uh, instead of it just coming directly out of the water, adding some actual structure coming out of the bottom will be very cool. Now, I want to show you guys what my plan is with the uh, quote unquote towers, because I realized doing a little bit of practice and I suck at building towers and it wasn't, it wasn't flowing for me. So one thing that I've decided to do is actually... Well, <laughs> let me explain it uh, with this. Before, when I said I was going up 11 blocks, because I think that was something that I've been working on, what I'm going to do is make base stations at about this height that are a very particular design, like some form of technology built to hold hovering orbs, like hovering, not necessarily orbs isn't the right word, but structures floating in the sky. So what I'm going to quickly do and just cut to it is go around and remove the material from the middle that I no longer want. And I'll show you a basic idea of what it looks like for the future. So we're going to work on this over time. It is also another big project to, uh, to work on, but yeah. So let me quickly do that. I'll, uh, I'll come up with the right sizes and make sure I have everything sorted out properly. And then, uh, yeah. I'll let you guys know what it looks like. So once again, give me a second and we'll see. Oh, I think it's going to look really good. We'll see what it looks like. Okay. And now we have a little bit of an idea of what it's going to look like. Uh, kind of. <laughs> it looks a little bit weird. Honestly, it does. And because of the fact that uh, that is no, like, no longer showing until I get closer, it does have its weird moments. But... What I did do is quickly put together a bit of a an idea of the general shape that they will be. Now, the bases will be slightly different, a little bit more pyramid-like, and uh, they will appear wherever the uh, base is uh, coming through the mountains. So they'll be at different heights, but all of these top bits are definitely the same height, and they're going to be these hovering obelisks of sorts. So it looks a bit weird from this angle, but if I go to 
a, a diagonal, you'll actually get to see the way that it kind of looks hovering in the sky. And my idea is that I want to have a, a viewing area, a um, observation deck of sorts in that middle one. So we might make that even bigger again. But then all of these ones will purely be decorational. They won't be made to uh, to house anything in particular other than just being held up by the, the beams of these beacons. So if we pop up here, you'll see that I just used some blackstone that I got from pulling all these apart and just made a very basic idea of, of the size and shape. And uh, if I just go, say like this, and imagine that this is where the, uh, the viewing deck is from. The observatory observation deck is what I called it. I can't, I couldn't remember. All of that sitting in around this point here and then having an open deck, for example, like so. <laughs> so yeah, these things are going to be obelisks, uh, kind of containing the power of these beacons and directing them to the sky and to the heavens. And uh, the bases are going to be designed to channel that power upwards into the obelisks. Now I do have some ideas for those bases and I kind of have done some uh, some work on a creative world to, to come up with a, a bit of a shape and an idea. And one of the things that I do want to use in the build, uh, well, here, I'll show you. And it's silly, but I think I'm gonna do it because because why not? <laughs> because we are at that point where why not go bigger and better? Apparently that's the first time I've grabbed diamonds since I lost all my achievements, but I'm going to use these. I'm going to use blocks of diamond in the build palette. And I have 47, which is decent. Like it's a decent amount, but uh, it's not enough. <laughs> Pretty sure at the moment, the design that I have has 16 her base station, and I've just added an extra six. <laughs> oh dear. So what, I have 15 times 16. That's, quick math again, 150, uh, and then 15 times six is 45, 90, 150, 240 blocks of diamond. Ah, uh, oh my god, I didn't even realize it was that much. <laughs> so, what I think we're going to do for the next episode is mine and 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 mine. And what I think I would like to do is if you look at the top right of the screen, we now have haste to almost every, I looked at Enderman, almost everywhere in this archipelago of islands. And not only that, but we've actually dug down to the correct height to mine for diamonds on each one of these all the way down to the bedrock. So I'm thinking in the next episode, we dig out a grid that matches, <laughs> oh God, that matches the size of these islands, this archipelago and see how many diamonds we can get. <sighs> I don't know why. Why not at this point? What's a little bit of digging? when I've built all of these mountains. But now we do have the haste, so strip mine under a 400 by 400 square area should theoretically get us a decent amount of diamonds. And I think what we will do is uh, do it at a height that is uh, quite low. We'll have to deal with a lot of the lava for sure, but I want to dig from basically Y level five up to Y level 16 in that grid. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm happy about it because I think it'll be fun and relaxing. I will uh, possibly do some of the digging on live streams and also uh, just relax and, and watch some YouTube videos. Hello, slimes. So all of this is going to be a giant grid of, uh, of stuff and it's all going to be down to about that height there the whole way around the whole damn way. And hopefully, hopefully, we get enough diamonds to work on the build that I want to. But that is next episode. And we will work on the towers or the obelisks, I think we might call them now, 
we'll work on the obelisks around the uh, the base in a later episode. I want to uh, I want to gather the materials that are required. I want to get stuff sorted and maybe do a little bit more practice uh, in some creative worlds, coming up with designs for the base stations and a block palette and whatnot. But uh, yeah, I think it's going to be really cool, and I'm really <laughs> really glad that we now have. 60 beacons set up around this base and permanently have these five boosts or, or uh, effects running off all of them. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I really do. If you did, I don't ask this often, but please leave a like. It will help me a lot if we can get a lot of likes on this video. And uh, yeah, Subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you to my level 3 Patreons, Tom, Master Shifu, and Nesrin for your continued support, and all of the rest of my Patreon supporters as well. I appreciate you guys a lot. Uh, you're helping me run my community server, the SMP. But yeah, with all that said, I uh, hope you guys take care of yourself until the next episode. I think it should come out fairly quick, but I mean, you never know. That's a lot of mining. <laughs> I'll do some of it on live streams, and uh, we'll get it done. We'll get it done. Take care of yourself, guys, until the next episode, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye. Whoop!